All right, the next part that I need to discuss is I'm done with this syllabus part. And uh, I hope you guys know that the syllabus is going to be the same in May and November. So the syllabus, even if there are changes, it happens from year on year basis. The May and November syllabus is always the same. So here we are looking at the preparation and the material part. So what are the resources available? What are the practice resources available? Uh, where to study from? How to begin your preparation? So that is what we need to understand here. This is a very major question that most of the students have. So first of all, I'll just tell you what are the available resources that you have. So basically, when you're looking at the requirements, you have a calculator that you need to purchase. So the calculator is going to be either, so there are Texas calculators allowed and there is a HP calculator, if I'm not wrong, that is allowed. HP nobody is using. We are going to be using the Texas instrument calculator. Financial calculator is what you have to use and the exact model that has been specified has to be used. So if you have any other scientific calculator whatsoever, you cannot use. There are students who've said that, can I take the normal calculator along with the financial calculator because my hands are set more in the normal or the scientific calculator, you're not allowed. So don't ask. You have to take the Texas Instruments specified calculator only. So there are two versions, there are two models of the calculator, Texas Instrument BA2 Plus and Texas Instrument BA2 Plus Professional. The Texas Instrument BA2 Plus ranges around 2800 or so and the professional version ranges around 3500 3800 rupees 3800 rupees or so um, you'll have to check the prices i don't give the calculator i don't sell calculators now texas instrument ba2 plus is a plastic body calculator and a thousand extra you have to pay for the professional version which has got exactly the same buttons all the functionalities are the same it is maybe better looking for some people it is in a metallic body finish but there are two very minute, not so important features extra in the professional version. 90% or 95% of my students, 95% of my students use a normal calculator, the Texas Instrument BA2+. Professional version, seldom do I see anybody using that. The two extra buttons that are there, not buttons, there are no extra buttons, it's exactly the same. The two extra features that are there in the professional version, it is of no use as such. And you can calculate it with maybe one or more two extra buttons um, you know you'll have to do one more plus or minus karke you can calculate you'll be able to calculate on the texas instrument ba2 plus also personally if i have to recommend buy the ba2 plus pro, uh, version you don't have to buy the professional version if you still want to spend a thousand extra it's up to you and for the details of the bookseller and all that you can you'll have you have the coordinator's number you have the academic coordinator's number you can whatsapp her you can just and she'll give the bookseller or the calculator seller's number and all that so that all you can do i'm not giving the numbers and all that here that is your calculator next comes to we come to the point as to where to study from what shall be the material so first of all you have to understand what are the two prominent materials that are available in terms of studying one is going to be the institute material that is provided by the garp institute this has started happening from the year 2020 that when you register for the institute for the exam the ebooks are available online i think you cannot download you have it on the vital source or something where you can see the books online and if you want to print i think you have the ability to print i'm not sure you have the ability to print so you can take a print and study from that or um, Again, you can, you can, you know, you can contact some bookseller or something and if they have a hard copy of the GARP material, you can do that. So uh, that is, that is about it. So you don't have to pay anything extra for the e-books because when you register for the FRM exam, the books are already incorporated in your exam fees. So you don't have to pay anything for the ex extra for the exam. Schweizer material is something that you have to study. Again, I do not give GARP material. I do not give Schweizer material. It's not mine to give. So Schweizer material is also there. So that is Schweizer is a book service provider is a service provider. Again, you can ping the coordinator, you can get the bookseller details and all of those things. When you're looking at the Schweizer material, so basically they provide four books and one practice book. When you're looking at the GARPS Institute material also, 
there are four books there is a lot of confusion in the year 2020 because you know there has been a change in syllabus and gap has suddenly started giving their own material so that is that is a little bit of that is a reason why people are a little confused so i'm going a little slow over here now what happens in schweizer books four subjects four books are there each book has got all the chapters and every chapter has got something called the learning outcome statement or the subheading so basically what happens is the institute very clearly defines the subtopics of the chapter so say for example you have a chapter on probability so the institute defines uh, event and event space uh, uh, calculation of proper base theorem understanding of this so institute gives you the exact details of what are the areas you need to study and understand in the chapter the institute provides a learning outcome statement learning outcome statement tells you basically it's like the subheading it tells you what are you supposed to be knowing for the exam because these exams are conducted across the globe so it is very important to have very a uh, good amount of clarity in terms of curriculum why am i saying all these things because if in an in an los if the institute has given calculate you, uh, uh, this or something that means sums can come from that area if the institute has given an los describe this or you should know how to do this or description of this or understanding of this that means calculation will not be required so that is why it is important to understand what is the los giving us based on that we need to we we, we understand whether to whether numericals are going to be required or not going to be required now when you're looking at the schweizer material again it is my personal opinion do not it's it's what i think and it's my belief you are free to believe me or not believe me and with all due respect to all the service providers and all the materials so i don't want to have any issues with anyone so when you're looking at the schweizer material basically what happens the four books the institute there is you have the chapter then you have key concepts which is giving a little bit of uh, a kind of a summary of the chapter and then you have question answers practice now when you're looking at the schweizer material it is a very simplified version of the text where you can understand the text part very easily um, not very easily i would say of course it's not covered in that depth as in the understanding has to come first but it's written in simple language so whatever is there in the institute it's written in simple and a more summarized or a more consolidated manner the text is given the question answers that are there behind every chapter that is like a dood bath question i call it it's like a very childish level question which please do not expect in the exam so in a couple of chapters you have some decent questions but otherwise they're very very simple mcq questions given behind the chapter so once you complete a chapter you are practicing those questions but we are not counting that as a part of your practice you have practiced that but that's like a theek hai ho gaya matlab you are just doing it as a formality after the chapter is over but you are practicing that and there is a practice book which is provided and i do not find the level of questions to be at all good when you're looking at the schweizer practice book there are two papers given in the practice book generally 100 mcqs and 100 mcqs so 200 mcqs so according to me this is a big no the four books you can use and again the institute launches the material generally the schweizer books are available from the month of february mid or something every year so for the may month it becomes a problem for the students to you know wait for that long before purchasing the material so may bad students generally use the previous year's material and then just check the changes once the new material is out and the november batch people can of course opt for the same year's material because may and november the syllabus is changed so the may batch people will be looking at the material of the previous year the november batch people can wait because mid feb the material is out and that is fairly okay to to purchase and start for november batch and even if you are having old material from someone you borrowed or something like that it's fine you can just acknowledge and check the changes that have happened from 19 to 20 once we have the changes list of changes we provide that and the coordinator sends it to everyone or you can whatsapp her and take the changes now with respect to the four books that have been provided by the institute now when you're looking at the gap material also they have the chapter they have a short very short summary given after the chapter and then what they do is they have the question and answers now the question answers that so the material that you see again for every chapter you have all the chapters the chapters are going to be the same in schweizer and institute material both within each excuse me within each of the chapters you are going to be having uh, uh, you know all the loss that is all the subheadings of the chapters covered obviously when you're looking at the gap material the content is a little extensive extensive in the sense that they have gone into much more detail relatively more detail as compared to schweizer right as in more explanation secondly the content is relatively i would say at a standard which is better or higher as compared to schweizer thirdly they have included some portions in between which is absolutely irrelevant from an exam point of view for example analysis let's i'm just giving a hypothetical example uh, the the 
the movement like say for example in the first chapter there's a huge table a one full page table from 1900s or 1800s how risk has changed to the year 2013 or 16 i'll just read it out to you just a second i'll just tell you that one table i'll tell you what is given just give me a second and you need to understand this so let's say 1750 there used to be a code of hammurabi records in babylon maritime second point roman era burial societies cover funerary expense uh, funerary expenses early medieval period then 1300 se lekar ke till 2017 and 2017 comes the final basel 3 norms now when that huge table of one full page is given obviously you need to understand it is irrelevant and you have to cancel that out so there are lot like it's like the did you know kind of things we used to have in our school textbooks also if you guys remember it's like those extra gk kind of knowledge that is provided so it's a good idea i'm not saying you don't have to go through or you should not go through it's a good idea to browse through to 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 update your knowledge but again it's not a part of your learning outcome statement so the institute material has got those kind of things extra so we can strike that off right and when i'll be studying when i'm going to be studying with you guys when i'm going to be teaching you the uh, you guys i'm going to be taking care of all that so you don't have to worry also what happens is say for example say this is one full page i'm talking about the gap material so there is so much of data given there is so much of text given now this entire text is basically going to tell me three points 1 2 3 in these three lines so it is my responsibility to underline those three lines because i will not be able to read the entire thing when i'm doing a revision so when you're studying for the first time you're supposed to be going through the entire content so i'll tell you how to do that so once you start so basically what we do is you will have an order of study which will tell you the sequence of chapters to follow after you've completed two or three chapters there is a lecture how to study and practice in which i cover exactly in detail how you are supposed to be studying i do a 15 20 minute lecture so once you start with your lectures once you start with your class with your classes in that 20 minute lecture i exactly explain that how you have to make notes how you have to underline how you have to write it's important now students at times particularly the professionals who find it a little a uh, childish but when you're studying you have to study like a child irrespective of whatever experience you have had when you study i even i study like that even today if i study i do study and when i study i still have that red pen or something of uh, you know two three colored pens and that is how i'm studying because the the methodology of study should be exactly the way you've been studied when you were a child so i always believe in that you know the, the way you studied as a child you should be studying today and your concepts have to be very thorough so i'll exactly explain how to go about it but right now i'm just broadly telling you from where you need to study and then and you have to do a couple of chapters then you'll be able to understand because then you would have gone through the material then i'll be able to tell you, you know this is how you make your formulas this is how you learn your formulas this is how you avoid silly mistakes so i'll explain exactly how you're supposed to be studying after you've completed two three chapters right so gap we are going to be studying gap material is like that which is a relatively more extensive version of schweizer so schweizer is more consolidated and too simplified gap is going to be giving it in more details so it's important it's good idea to go through the details once and while going through the details i'll explain how to do the unlining and all that so that once you're coming back to it again you know exactly what areas to revise you can't revise the entire curriculum again next uh there are hardly any examples given when you're looking at the chapters with numerical sums formulas proofs etc the formulas and proofs are included in the institute material but when you're looking at the formulas portion as in the the examples and all there are barely any examples that have been covered across the material uh at the end, and which of course when i'm teaching i obviously take a lot of numerical examples and all in order to teach because otherwise if you're not solving questions if you're not doing it through examples you're not be able to learn and understand the application part of it the next thing is there are end of chapter summary is very very basic and very two two small summary is uh, included so that is that and then they have the question answers given now the problem over here with question answers is there are a good number 20 question answers on an average is given per chapter in schweizer back questions there are hardly four or five questions per chapter given which is as i told you it's more of a formality to do those questions when you're looking at the question and answers of behind the gap material 20 25 questions 20 questions on an average 40 50% of the questions are theory questions which is irrelevant for your exam define this state this what is the difference between this so it does not make sense because you are not going to be writing any answers in the exam so you can absolutely ignore that what my suggestion would be is that you go through all the questions so that you know yes i know this i know this i know this if you don't know something if say for example um, there was a question i was going through that how is this formula applied in this place so that was a relatively better question so you can just browse through the questions very quickly and if you find a relatively non direct question you can see the answer you don't have to write the answer in the exam and 50% of it could be sums or 
MCQs. If it's MCQ, it's fine. Even if it is a sum, because even if you're in the exam, you'll be getting four options, but you have to solve the sum and mark the answer as one of the options. So if there are sums given, you should be practicing that obviously, because in the exam, even, if, even though the sums are going to be in an MCQ format, you'll be having four options, but you have to solve the sum and then mark the answer in the options, right? So the sums that are given, you need to do that. MCQs also, what I've seen is 70-80% are relatively at a very, very easier level. And I doubt if the exam level questions are going to be of the standard that, uh, uh, of the GARP level questions provided to you. So I have browsed through the questions of multiple chapters. And I doubt if the GARP level of questions is going to be sufficient for you to practice and clear the exam. That is my opinion again. So how and then there are a lot of other practice banks and question banks and all those available. So there are a couple, uh, um, some, some, some question banks available. It will be very wrong on my part to name uh, uh, the question banks and all. But um, again, you have to understand the syllabus has changed over the years. So it's very important to understand which questions are in the syllabus, which questions are out of the syllabus, and that creates a problem. Now, also, you have to understand there are variety and huge amounts of resources available. There are multiple people, multiple question banks and everything. So that becomes a challenge in terms of, you know, what to study, what not to study. You can't do all the practice available in the world. So you have to understand what to prioritize, what to practice and what not to practice. So when we do the how to study and practice lecture, as I told you, after you do two, three chapters, you get that lecture. So you have that lecture. We do it here in the live class and the video students get it in the exam mentoring folder. I'm coming to that also. That will define exactly how you're going to go about your preparation. So in there we discuss that, you know, what practice is to be done. So with respect to practice from my end, we are going to be providing you two practice books are there and tenure past questions are there. So there are three practice books. This is all you need to do and you won't have to touch a single other uh, place for practice. Other than that, we are expecting 2020 Institute will also be providing you question banks or online practice material. You are supposed to be doing that. Also, Institute gives you a sample mock test paper before the exam. So that mock test you're supposed to be solving before the exam. And when to solve, I'm coming to that part as well. So when with respect to the material, you will need to purchase calculator. Ideally, you will have to purchase the Schweizer textbooks also. And you will also have to purchase the or you already have the access to GARP material on an online format. If you want it in printed format, it is going to be relatively easier and better to study. It's easier. I mean, at least I want always my all the books in my uh, in a hard copy format. So I would suggest you need to have your GARP also in a hard copy format. Schweizer, you would be having you would be having access to Schweizer and GARP. There are certain chapters like a GARP code of conduct, maybe or a data aggregation chapter, maybe that excuse me, that I will give you the notes for. So there you don't have to study from either GARP material or the institute material. And if there is anything extra, say for example, we are studying a chapter in Schweizer. So I will give, give you a list of things since we have seen a lot of changes and jumbling up happening. So I'll give you a list of things. So if there is anything that needs to be studied from GARP extra, you study from Schweizer and if I have one paragraph extra to be studied from GARP or anything additionally, I'll tell you. So if say for example, data aggregation chapter, you'll study from my notes and nowhere else. So I will mention that to you once we start off with the classes. Say, for example, a chapter like an option strategies. You will not study at all from the Schweizer material. You will just do my class because I'll discuss every single concept, formula, everything we'll do. Once that is done, you will go through the GARP material and that's all you have to do. So you just have to browse through it. Otherwise, you won't even need it because all you need to do is a lecture because we'll be doing all the strategies and options and derivatives and fixed income and portfolio, the entire portfolio theory we are going to do. Once I'm done with the portfolio theory, I'll tell you not to touch Pfizer, just to browse through the GARP material. But my material is sufficient. My, my explanation in the class is going to be sufficient. And you can practice and you'll automatically understand that you'll be able to solve all the questions. So that is how we are going to be going about with the chapter. So for every single chapter, I'll tell you my notes are sufficient. My class is sufficient. Or you need to refer to GARP or you need to refer to Schweizer for this particular chapter. So chapter by chapter, I'll tell you that part. So for some chapters, you might need to refer to Schweizer. For some chapter, you might need to refer to GARP. For some chapter, you might need to refer to my notes and then GARP. For some chapter, you might need to refer to Schweizer plus my notes, which whatever extra I've done. For some chapters, you might not need to refer any book, whatever you, whatever you have written during the class. Like for chapters like probability and portfolio and sorry, portfolio and uh, derivatives and fixed income. Since there's so much of graphs and formulas and all, you write along with me in areas. And for those chapters, I've summarized it in such a manner through the graphs and uh, formulas and all that, that that's all you'll have to study in Schweizer and GARP. You can just browse through it roughly and you'll see that everything is covered. So for every chapter, I'll mention that. I know you'll be, you're a little confused with respect to the 2020 material and how things are, but that is how you'll have to do. 
And for every chapter, I'll tell you what to do. So you don't have to worry on those grounds. So this is the material. Then with respect to out of syllabus, another question I get is which is Schweizer going to be covering everything or is GAP Institute material going to be sufficient or uh, again as I told you that other practice banks you'll not be able to, you'll not be able to do all the practice and um, so the practice material I'll give you is comprehensive and it's covering everything so you don't have to worry about it. But you cover everything till here then if you have time you'll think about other practice material but as of now you're not going to be needing it at all. <clears throat> With respect to the coverage, so when you're looking at the Schweizer books, the coverage of the entire curriculum is fine. So Schweizer books, basically, what we use is we use it for the we use it for the covering of the syllabus part. But the practice is going to be absolutely not uh, uh, sufficient if you're looking at the Schweizer material. I don't even count Schweizer material as a practice material, as I told you. Some students also have access. They've told me the, the you know some students also have Schweizer online questions or some 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 CD questions or something. It's it's of very poor quality, very poor standard. So please do not bother about it. So Schweizer is only for studying. For studying, we'll either study from Schweizer or from the GAP material, or you don't need any of them, or you need to browse through for every single individual chapter. I will inform that to you. Fine. The practice part, you will have practice two practice books as I told you. Schweizer back questions and GAP back questions you are anyways doing. I am not counting it in practice but that is assumed that once a chapter is completed, it will take you a few minutes to go through 3-4 questions of Schweizer. It will take you 5-7-10 minutes maybe to complete all the 20 questions behind GAP. The theory questions you will browse through, if you find something nice, a little un as in relatively new or relatively new conceptual or something, just put a tick mark to the question and go through that. And with respect to the other practice questions, uh, you have to practice those. But this practice you have to do. What you can do is you can do the two practice books along with the studying right now. So you complete, you do the class. And I'll tell you for that particular chapter whether you need to do the Schweizer or the GAP or not. If not, you just do the practice from here, which is going to take you hardly 10 minutes per chapter. And then you do the practice from the two practice books I have provided. You have to do this. The 10 year papers, you can do it after your syllabus is completed so that part you can do it with revision so you do the two practice books right now when you're preparing and when you're completing the syllabus and ideally we'll try to complete the syllabus 20 days to one month before the exam depending on when you're starting i'm coming to the duration required and all that so at that point of time you will be doing let's say the revision and the tenure papers let's say so you need some practice material even at the time of revision so maybe we'll keep it for that time period are you comfortable with the material part now, with respect to out of syllabus questions, out of syllabus questions, now when you're looking at a professional exam, you cannot expect that every single hundred question is going to come from the question you've practiced or from the stuff you've read. Ideally, 98, 99 questions should turn up from what you've studied and what you've practiced. On an average of C, maybe even one question did not turn up from whatever I've, uh, from outside of what I've taught, but it is possible. It's a professional exam. You have to understand that. <coughs> There could be one or two questions that might be coming in, which is which, which is something that you do not have an idea about. So that you'll have to be prepared for a professional exam. Also, with respect to the level of questions and all, in when I've discussed the exam, I've discussed that part, and um, so I, I've discussed in the exam portion. So that was the out of syllabus question. What all to buy? I've told you, you have to buy the calculator. You need to have access to Schweizer material, the hard copy, the book sell and all details you can take. Institute material, you already are going to be getting it when you register for the exam. But it's ideal, it's, it's good to have a hard copy. It's easier when you're preparing, marking and everything. Schweizer enough, Schweizer is not at all relevant for practice. But for the content part, it's absolutely fine. The entire content, every single LOS, every single paragraph is going to be covered by me. Every single LOS or every single chapter is going to be taken care of by me. So for syllabus, the coverage part, Schweizer is going to be okay. Whatever extra you need with respect to Schweizer or GAP. So say for example, there's something extra here, not here. I will make you mark and add it over here. If I'm teaching from this book and there's something extra over here, I will incorporate it over here. And if I'm not teaching from either of them because they've both given the material in a very complicated manner, I will teach in my way. Like for example, time value of money. Time value of money is not there in Schweizer, not there in institute material. But loan amortization and time value of money, you have to study with me. In fact, for mathematics, I've also done a lecture on basic mathematics. So index number, compound and, and uh, you know, permutation combination, little bit here and there you're needing the concepts. For, so for those who are not comfortable with, the, uh, with, with those areas, I've done a lecture on that too. So, Although it is not a part of your syllabus, time value of money, so I have done it and you have to do it. You can't study fixed income, you can't study other chapters without doing time value of money properly. So don't debate with me in terms of, you know, this is out of syllabus, I don't have to do this. Please understand, I mean, I'm covering, I have to look at Schweiz, I have to look at the institute material, I have to look at the questions that are coming up. 
you know the kind of uh, questions that are there and there are portions where where gap is not extensive there are good number of chapters where the gap material is not extensive in the sense that let's say for example portfolio in portfolio they have not explained the things in so much detail and you'll have very you'll have a very significant lack of understanding if you just do it from gap material so portfolio you have to do exactly the way i've done with all the graphs and all the way we have done we are doing in class you understanding so gap is absolutely not going to be sufficient when you're looking at the portfolio portion of it and the understanding and there are places where they've not discussed the graph and all properly so for the chapters you have for individual chapter it could be referring to schweizer it could be referring to gap it could be referring to my material and it could be referring to schweizer plus one paragraph from gap which i will mention so that i will take care of you don't have to worry so is schweizer enough for practice definitely not for material yes it's fine along with gap institute material again as i told you so this is how we are going to do so for individual chapter by chapter i'll have to let you know um calculator as i've told you the professional version is not needed if someone wants to spend an extra 1000 you can how to use the calculator you'll have to learn how to use the calculator it's not like a normal calculator we have a full lecture series on calculator which is also available on youtube so in 12 videos i've done basically 12 or 13 parts are there so how to use the calculator how to use the basic functions how to store values then how to use the bond related functions how to use the time value of money related functions so the series is there so it may not be that so when you're doing the calculator lecture so suppose when you have done time value of money you will be able to do the first three parts of calculator once you've done another chapter probably it's statistics when you do then you will learn so statistics is going to be teaching you mean median mode then there is a calculator lecture on which which is going to be telling you how to calculate mean and covariance and correlation on the calculator so you have to go a little parallelly over there so at least the first couple of lectures of calculator you have to start and once you start doing the calculator lecture you'll understand so the basic logarithm plus minus permutation combination so the basic functions you have to cover first so the entire thing is there it has to be done you have to learn how to buy the, uh, use a calculator then comes with respect to the time taken to prepare for the exams now there are students who say for example you are looking at the may exam or the november exam so if say for example your deadline is in january so let's say first jan or first june you start so you have january february march april you have 4 months to prepare and then you have around 17 days because the exam is generally on the third saturday you have around 17 days for revision so when you're looking at the four month time frame it's 16 weeks 16 weeks you have around 60 chapters which what is the last chapter number 6971 second they reduce the number of, i don't have the exact total number of chapters 16 on average on an average you have around 65 70 chapters or so so when you have 65 chapters let's say so you'll be having 16 weeks for 65 chapters you need to do along around four and a half chapters per week now you will have to see whether you have decent amount of time with your jobs etc to be able to cover four and a half chapters on a weekly basis in general the majority that i have seen are registering four and a half months to six months before the exam so most of the students you could say are registered generally five months before the exam they start preparing the working professional generally starts six seven months eight months earlier i've seen people starting three months earlier and cracking cracking the exam i've seen people starting eight months earlier and not cracking the exam obviously you have to understand there are 100 students out of which 40 percentile of a 45 percentile is a result so 45 percent people will pass 55 percent people will not pass now a lot of factors come into consideration as to what amount of time you are going to take in order to prepare is you do you have an existing background then in that case you'll take a lesser amount of time if you are a student you'll have much more flexibility with respect to the amount of time you have to prepare if you are more focused kind of an individual where you know you can complete a chapter in 3 hours and i know students who have to rewind and forward the chapter because they start using the phone in between the lecture or or uh, in the class they are missing a lot of classes in between so how much of focus you have what is your concentration level when you are practicing how many times are you fidgeting with the phone what is your speed so a lot of factors are going to matter it's very difficult on my part to exactly comment that when you are starting but ideally of 5 months to 6 months i believe people are starting before 5 to 6 months it's good students can have generally managed before 3 months also but then you know it puts a pressure and you're not enjoying studying you're just studying for the heck of the exam you're not enjoying what you're learning so it's very important to enjoy what you're learning because otherwise you know it's it's you're not going to be able to apply things very well in your jobs and and your career and your field so in general 5 to 6 months before is what generally most of the students start with 5 months 4 months not 6 months and quite a few students now that i have seen the trend is people have started registering relatively earlier because you need to do a decent amount of practice also 
when you're looking at the exam part i'll come i'll, I'll discuss that once we start with the chapters and all you know i, I keep on giving you instructions uh the people who don't pass so out of 100 students who practice 90 pass 10 may not pass out of 100 students who don't practice 90 do not pass 10 pass so your probability of passing is going to go up if you're practicing so you have to study conceptually so you do the class you do the studying you can't do the class and then just you can you can't just do the classes i've seen student doing just the classes and doing nothing else classes is to explain you have to study to understand absorb learn classes to make you understand make you thoroughly conceptually prepare you then you have to learn and absorb the content then you practice to be able to apply the content it has to be done that way so i it's, it's very wrong if i say that you know you do this 20 hour thing or 30 hour uh, crash thing with me and you'll be sorted and you'll be able to clear the exam it's wrong if i'm saying that i'm i'm being very incorrect in that regard you have to enjoy the process of studying you have to attend be attentive you have to study hard you have to work hard then you get into the 40 45 percentile people if without studying you could have cleared everybody would have done everybody would have cleared you have to work hard and you have to clear the exam there'll be one out of 100 people who will clear the exam without studying not 99 out of 100 right so it will be very wrong on my part to tell you that uh, uh, in three months you can manage in two months you can manage there are people who manage in three months generally students so the duration again when you're looking at the lectures on an average if i see a three hour per per chapter i would be looking at a 150 to 180 hour lectures so 180 hours approximately again it keeps on updating because you know i keep on doing more extensively i keep on adding things and all so it might be there so when you're looking at the lectures i'll just give you an idea very quickly how to go about it how to go about the preparation so basically there are lectures which are provided which we do in the live class over here for you and for the home viewing students there is a folder called exam mentoring in which this first class is also there there's a first class that we're doing that is the introduction to syllabus understanding the overview the scope the syllabus the preparation the material um, uh, and everything then you have how to study and practice this you're supposed to be doing after you've completed two or three chapters you're supposed to be doing the how to study and practice lecture so i'll tell you exactly how to make notes how to study and where to study and everything uh, where to study i've already told you then you have how to use calculator which is also there on youtube so you have to learn how to use a calculator particularly in part one when you're in part two you've already understood how to use it then once your syllabus is complete you have to watch the how to revise lecture so i'll tell you exactly before you know 20 20 25 on an average students who are who have started earlier they generally complete the curriculum by before 30 days otherwise you complete it at least before 15 to 20 days so once your syllabus is completed you watch the how to revise and you know exactly what to do in the next 15 days then there is a how to attempt your paper this is an exceptionally important lecture so this tells you all the exa exam tricks exam tricks is not that without studying you'll be able to crack the exam it's just that in what order to attempt the exam how to not make mistakes and how to attempt your paper how to do the time management all of that is discussed over here this lecture i generally advise students to watch it twice one before the mock test so that you can apply all the concepts over here, all the tricks over here on the mock test also so as to get a good practice to get a good understanding and then before the exam day also you watch this lecture then there is going to be your lectures so say for example chapter one there is a folder which has got part one part two part three there are three lectures three video lectures over here similarly you have till chapter let's say 65 or 68 or whatever so that is going to be in all the class lectures which we are doing here even for the live students there are some chapters i give it to you at home so that our syllabus can go in a good pace right that is all the lectures every single lecture every single los every single paragraph is covered over here and for this you have to follow the order of study provided to you so order of study tells you that you do like say for example the order of study would have time value of money first then probability so you don't start with the book one chapter one you start in a particular order as i've told you that options all the chapters need to be done together so the order of study is very well thought out try not to alter that because if you alter and if you face problem it's on you because say for example you need probability before portfolio you need this before this so the structure has been made in a particular way which is going to be helping you to learn better theory practical alternated easy difficult alternated so i think about all the factors before i make an order of study and provide it to you so based on this order of study you'll be doing all the chapters so if i've told you first chapter you have to do 14 you take up 14 first then i tell you this chapter you'll take up this particular chapter first then there is going to be a revision lectures 
this is not to be used right now once you've completed the curriculum then you can use a revision lecture you may or may not use a revision lecture it's up to you so if you think that a lecture is going to be making it better you know you'll be able to revise concept better through the lecture it's fine if you think you want to study on your own and just revise on your own without the lecture that's fine there's nothing new over here so these chapters are only revised over here uh, um, there was one moment uh, there is going to be formula lecture so where we are going to be discussing so i do a stretch of lectures once you've completed the curriculum so we do like all the formulas we revise and understand the formulas better so we do all the formulas together so that is going to be a formula lectures and uh, along with that so how you start is you've done the first class today then you're going to st have your books access to your books and all you'll start with time value of money probability generally uh, they're there on youtube also the first couple of chapters we generally keep it online as well you do those chapters then in the exam entering folder you have the how to study and practice lecture you do this one once you're done with this or once we're done with this in the live class once you're done with this you simply keep on following the order of study that is provided to you and one after the other you keep on doing your chapters once your syllabus is over then you have your revision and attempting the paper and mock test in class and everything that is all explained to you so we do the mock test and all before the exam so the video students get the mock paper on whatsapp groups they can do the mock paper at home and uh, the live students can do it with me and um, every month I keep on asking you guys that, you know, WhatsApp in the WhatsApp group, please mention how many chapters you've completed. Everybody mentions that. So even if you're in the live batch or in the home uh, lectures batch, irrespective of that, please participate. It's very important because you'll be able to understand your performance with respect to others. You need to feel a part of the class also. You can't just sit at home and just do lectures. So be participating, uh, be attentive and be, be uh, do participate. Solve each other's doubts and all. It is going to increase, improve your concepts and your clarity and all. So we do doubts, uh, doubts and all those through that. Again, I've given the, the doubt details separately. With respect to time management, question comes up very often. So I had posted a lecture, how to manage studies with full-time job. So for those who are in jobs and, and are a little skeptical in terms of, you know, how to go about preparation, how to manage studies with jobs, just watch that 10 minute lecture and you'll know all the tricks that you use. Even I have to work seven days, you know, we have to be very, very productive. You'll have to work on productivity if you want to do something extra. Um, how much time to prepare again? So basically you have, as I told you, 150, 180 hours of lectures of the class lectures. Along with that, I would say like it's, it's less of a... I don't like to plan it in terms of hours. I like to plan it in terms of content. So if say, for example, I've started five months before the exam, I'm leaving. So five months is, let's say five months into four is 20 weeks. I'm leaving three weeks for revision. So I'm left with 17 weeks. So 17 weeks, if I have to do, let's say 65 chapters, so seven, 65 by 17 is, let's say approximately five chapters a week. So I'll have to do five chapters a week, four and a half. I'll try to keep five so that there is any backlog later, I'll be able to manage. So it's not about the hours, it's five chapters. So five chapters worth of classes you have to do, five chapters worth of studying you have to do, and five chapters worth of practice you have to do. Now people structure in different ways. Monday to Friday, let's say before office, you do the five chapters. And Saturday, Sunday, you're doing the studying and practice. So Saturday, Sunday, you do the studying and practice, uh, the lectures, and Monday to Friday, you're doing studying and practice. So whatever suits you. So we'll discuss more in the, when, when we do the how to study and practice lecture. You'll understand that. Uh, so time taken to preparation is going to depend uh, is going to depend from person to person. And the way I uh, ask students to do is, so students can manage. They have a lot of time. Working professionals, the simple idea I tell them is that first three four three weeks you try you do a trial run. If you think you are going to be able to manage, you register for the current exam. Otherwise, you register for the next six months, uh, uh, post six months uh, uh, exam, uh, uh, exam, which is scarce. So say, for example, right now, you will try in the month of January. If things are fine, you register for May. By the end of January, if things are not fine, you register for the November batch. Simple, fair enough. So you do a trial run. And obviously, the speed at which you're going to be grasping and studying is going to be relatively on the lower side in the beginning. And it, your tempo and your momentum picks up as you move forward. Because then you're getting more comfortable with all the topics and all. And also, there are a lot of students who, you know, who've taken a five-year, seven-year, ten-year break and then they've gotten into studying because they need to specialize in risk management or something. In that case also, it takes the first 10, like say, for example, you're reading a book. The first 50, 70, 80 pages is a problem, as in where you're trying to get in the groove. And then it becomes a very easy process to continue. So even those who have taken a long break and are getting back to studying, for the first 10, 20, 30, 20 hours maximum of lecture, you're going to be having a problem. As in you'll be trying to get comfortable with the studying part again, since you've not been in touch with studying, let's say. And then again, it gets back to normal and it won't be a problem. And uh, other than that, so as I told you, it's very simple. You do the class, you do the studying. 
studying from either Shwaris or Agap material as I'll tell you for each chapter and then you do the practice and you continue following the order of study and you complete that. Uh, we also there's also a performance tracker that we given which you know you can keep on ticking whatever things are done and it'll tell you how many days what number of chapters you have to do all that will be provided and won't be an issue uh, the exam questions difficulty level I've told you Schweizer practice is absolutely irrelevant Ga practice also is not going to be good enough so the practice material that we're giving is going to be relatively at a higher level so the exam level will be here the material that I'm giving is here and the Schweizer material is probably here Schweizer is here, exam is here and the material I am giving is here. So if you do this material, obviously you will be getting irritated, you will not be able to solve all the questions by yourself. Maybe your strike rate is going to be 40-50% but the objective in pra uh, for practice is to understand the approach of the questions. Because in the exam it will be a mix, there will be standard questions, there will be a few easy questions, there will be a few kind of, a couple of going above the head, there will be 20-30 standard questions maybe, there will be 20-30 good quality questions, there will be 5-10-15 very difficult questions. If you're preparing Schweizer, you can't tackle this question. But if you're preparing this level questions, you can tackle this level questions. So the practice becomes quite important when you're looking at the exam. And as I told you, with respect to practice, you'll do the two practice books of mine along with the study. Do not do, do not make this mistake of doing only the lectures. Do not make this mistake of doing only lectures and studying. Lecture, studying, practice. Lecture, studying, practice. Class, studying, practice. It has to go in that order for all the chapters. Make sure you're maintaining that. Don't push the practice towards the end. And the 10-year paper, you can do the practice at the end during with revision. So you'll have certain amount of practice to do then as well. And uh, yeah, we, we will be also having a mind map, which is going to be a better version of summary notes and all that. So you can uh, revise the entire content through the mind map. And that shall be all I believe that you need. And as I told you, after completing a couple of readings, please make sure that you are uh, attending the how to study and practice lecture which will tell you exactly how to make notes, how to study and everything so won't be a problem. Along with that a couple of things, uh, students have questions with respect to work experience and all you can ping the coordinator and you will get an idea. In the scope part I have mentioned, I have discussed that also and uh, with respect to the other things that you know students always question what should we do along with, along with the FRM in order to develop yourself or to, to make yourself better. Um, so you can watch this uh, lecture, how, how to become more employable. So there's a lecture, 10 minute lecture, start watching that because again FRM can get you to the interview table but cracking the interview is going to be a different question. You do not need to know, I got this question recently, you don't, ha don't have to know a Python or an Excel or something or a PPT to crack FRM exam. But when you, once you enter a job, you're not going to be solving questions in the office on pen and paper, right? So there are tools which you have to know like Excel, PPT and all these are the most basic things that you have to be very good with. Your English, your vocabulary, your report writing. So there are quite a few things that you need to be good with. So start working on that simultaneously as well. So you watch the lecture how to become more employable and start working on yourself along with that. Right. So this is how in general you're going to have to go about it. Tell me, is it comfortable this part?